Hello beautiful souls, this is Maria Lupita Gurule and today I just want to finish the conversation about soul agreements and soul contracts and this time I want to do it from the perspective from the perpetrator. So let's just delve right in. The last three videos I've done this last month about soul contracts and soul agreements have been primarily from the perspective of the victim, the one who's on the receiving end of the atrocities that we as humans can oftentimes inflict upon another. I want to make mention that even though we are eternal, our consciousness, our soul, our spirit, the part of us that is here that animates our body, it's the life force within us that makes us alive while here incarnate on the earth plane. That is the part of us that returns to the other side when we cross and when our bodies are no longer viable. That part is eternal. That part is all-knowing and has all wisdom and is here in the process of applying it. There's incredible wisdom that is gained at the soul level through the application of the things that are known and felt in theory. So as souls on the other side, we have awareness, we have that complete connection and understanding, but in order to really experience it, we come here. Even though we are eternal, even though that part of us still exists, and even after these difficult lives will still continue, those are the parts of us that we still really need to address and work with and understand that there's no outs. There are outcomes and consequences for all of our behaviors. We have to answer for the things that we do. So even though we have understanding on the other side, even though we have these agreements that we're going to engage with each other in these ways, that does not give us an out for the choices that we make in life. If we do those difficult things, if we as perpetrators perform those difficult things, we do have to answer for it. There are consequences and outcomes for everything. So those souls who do choose to commit those atrocities upon others do have to answer for it. We all do. And every single one of us has something that we ourselves have done. And if you're saying, oh no, I haven't done any of that, then we're not looking deep enough. Because even just the act of having negative thoughts about others, having judgments about others, and then speaking those judgments out loud is a whole other thing. And then speaking it out loud to other people while engaging their judgments about another is even worse. Gossip. Almost every single person communicates in that way. That's not communication. That is actively judging, speaking our judgments, and then voicing it and engaging in negative energy. Almost every single human has done it. And when I understood what that behavior was because it didn't feel good, you stop. When I was in an environment, in a work environment, where a lot of this was happening and realizing personal responsibility for everything that shows up in our life, without having to judge or scold another person, without having to blame or shame them, was able to just manage myself. So the moment that I was able to stop and when that kind of behavior or activity would begin, I would just excuse myself. I wouldn't judge them because then I would just be reinforcing that behavior. I would just remove myself and start doing something different. Every single one of us is a perpetrator in some form, in some way, at some time. That is what we're here to learn. Sometimes those atrocities are more horrific, more impactful, more horrendous. And every single soul answers for all activity. Every single thing that I think, that I do and I say, I am responsible for. 
So as I engage in these videos and as I have sessions with others, I am responsible for everything that I think, do, and say. And if for any reason that any person misguides or harms another intentionally, ah, there's outcomes. There's responsibilities that we have. We will experience everything that we put out in life, both the negative and the positive, and we will feel it tenfold. So for those people who have done horrific things to others, they will feel it on the other side. They will experience it from the firsthand perspective. There is an ability to switch the roles and be able to go through that experience from the perspective of the other and to feel every bit of it. And when that is done, ah, oh, that is sometimes the most painful thing that we could experience because then we realize that of our own hand, of our own choice, of our own ability harmed another. And then we assimilate that. We gain the wisdom from that experience that we was able to have in life. While we're on the other side, that's what the life review is about. We're able to pick apart particular circumstances and activities and situations. We're able to freeze frame it, insert ourselves into it, gain the wisdom and the knowledge from it, and then begins the process all over again, developing the next life where we ourselves, we ourselves get to say, you know, I didn't do so good with that. I really want to give it another try. I also want to make mention right now that every single one of us, we call it a contract because it is something that we agree to. It is a divine plan that we have and these are sacred things that we choose to learn. And sometimes those occur over the process of many lifetimes, not just in one. So it's a soul contract that we have with nothing else than mm, call it God, if that's the word that you choose to use, the universe. This divine energy that governs all systems, that is omniscient, omnipresent, all-knowing, all, all aware, knows all of us by name and number, our desires, our likes, our dislikes, and knows all of the others and this intricate process of management of all of the engagements, interactions, and actions of souls. It's a pretty intense thing. So the things that we are learning oftentimes take multiple lifetimes. Sometimes we're learning it with soul families and so we incarnate in multiple lifetimes together as we're learning as a group these fundamental things, these soul moralities as I speak of, compassion, tolerance, forgiveness. So sometimes we come into this incarnation as soul families playing multiple parts in each of these lifetimes. One lifetime I'll be this, the next time my lifetime I'll be that. And we're working these things through together as a soul group. And we call them contracts because again, they're agreements, things that we chose to agree to. But I want to begin to look at these more like plans. These are general plans, an itinerary like that you would have on a trip or a journey that you might have a specific set or a plan or an idea of where you begin and where your destination is, but anything could happen in between there. And sometimes when we have those soul lessons, sometimes we're able to accomplish the learning of those soul lessons early in our incarnation. And so those activities won't continue to perpetuate throughout the rest of our lifetime. And what do I mean by that? Let me give an example. So let's say in somebody's soul plan that they are learning the concept of, of lack and greed. Okay, so they're learning about abundance and how to have their supply. And in the lifetime, if a person comes into it and wanting to learn about supply, but has a feeling of lack, they have options within that plan of how to address the understanding of there isn't lack. 
So they could do one of two things. In that way, they could learn about free flow of energy, that everything is free flowing, that when we attune to nature, nature is nurturing and that we are part of nature and that supply and our needs will be met if we allow ourselves to connect and be guided in life. Or the opposite, we can feel that lack and then feel a negativity within ourselves and then begin to compare ourselves to others and say, well, I don't have it, but they do. And which might ensue jealousy, which also might ensue greed. And if that begins that process early on in life, that one soul could start to engage in ways that are shady, that are less than ethical out of the need and greed and the want for accumulation. When a person feels a sense of lack and inability to satiate that lack, to appease it, to make, to have a feeling that their needs are being met, they will continue to engage in ways and, and that are harmful to themselves and potentially to others. They might go into schemes of fraud where it is in their perception the fastest way to get what they have because I don't. So that could start an entire other path. Those two souls are learning the same lesson, but their approaches are different. If in that scenario, a person feels that sense of lack and begins to engage in behaviors with other souls, that other soul has an agreement to also learn that lesson. And say that soul that is filled with greed does begin to act with other souls from that place of greed and potentially creating schemes of harm and fraud. So that's where the soul agreements come into. There's the perpetrator who's trying to learn the principles of lack and abundance and supply, and so is this other person. But this other person has a fear, and within them, they might have a feeling, people take advantage of me, things never work out, and so they might have a belief about themselves that for some reason is a match. That this other person's fear is also in alignment with this perpetrator's fear, and so then begins the agreement. They begin to engage in behaviors and dynamics that is playing out that dynamic, that lesson, in that negative way. And, and both of them are learning something in it. So until the person is caught, until the person learns a new way, when they understand principles, when they begin to make amends for their behavior, when they become aware of their behavior and then begin the process of restitution, making amends, not engaging in that same way. If by some chance that person who engaged in the greed and fraud was to come to terms to it, with it in the same lifetime, they can make amends. They can have that understanding within the same lifetime. And then all of the other soul agreements that would have been a match for that fraud or greed would now have to be rerouted to somebody else who also has that same energy. When this person comes into awareness of their ill behavior, bad behavior, the consequences, then they can begin to make amends in this lifetime and begin to make restitution and then to be able to engage in ways in a new way, setting a new path, setting a new direction. And so, there is potential for a plan, a soul's plan to be altered midstream if they learn the lesson. A lifetime does not have to be an entire accumulation of the same. In fact, we want it to be different. It is quite possible to have updates to our soul's plan constantly. As our circumstances change, as our experiences change, as our learning and growing change, our plans will also change. That is why I call it a living breathing. It is a sacred living library. Everything is in motion. Everything is in flux. Even when we have a plan, even those can be updated. So those souls who have chosen those negative experiences, 
we do so with the understanding that hopefully growth will come out of it. The most difficult thing about incarnating on the earth plane is again this whole amnigajic state, this state of amnesia when we incarnate. We forget about all of that. That serves purpose because if we knew every single thing, it takes away our free will and choice and we may as well be on the other side. So we are spontaneous in the moment, feeling things in the present moment, utilizing and hopefully engaging with our higher self, our guidance and our wisdom to be able to make those decisions. Do I do this or do I do this? This has these consequences and this has these outcomes and these consequences. One feels better. We make the choice. When we have learning and our soul expands and grows, then our circumstances also change around us. So when we finally are able to grasp that negative concept, and it's interesting that I use the example of lack because that has been one of my greatest soul's lesson is understanding the energy of money, the energy of supply, the energy of just being supported in life. Oftentimes, our need for material things stems from that original place. Until we discover the original source of pain, then we can actually address it. It's a difficult process, but that's why we're here. We're here to engage in these dynamics for the sake of discovery. And when we actually understand that our problems are not so much our problems, but they are abilities, opportunities for us to say, that doesn't feel so good. You might want to try this other thing. There are yet again more opportunities for us to check in with ourselves to choose something different. And for those soul agreements from the perpetrators that have been extreme, horrific violations towards others, towards their body, towards their persons, towards their being, every single soul answers and pays for what we do either in this lifetime because i guarantee every single one of us experiences what we ourselves put out there so when a negative person is doing negative things they will re-experience negative things hassles chaos problems and all sorts of things until we are willing to shift out of it through our learning and our growing Every single person has to answer for it. But once we learn, we no longer need to engage in those behaviors. So one of the, the things that has been happening upon this earth plane, why so many new souls are incarnate at this time. The population as, is at its all time greatest on the earth right now. It is an exciting time to be here. And if you can believe it or not, those of us that are here are like, oh my God, I want to get out of here. All I want to do is go home because of how difficult it is. And all of the souls on the other side are like, oh my God, I can't wait. Oh my God, I can't wait. I want to go there because I want to be part of this shift. I want to feel this for myself. God, I can't wait to get there. But then we're here and then it's a whole other story. But we can adjust it. We can make those modifications. When we have our souls learning, we can then progress. We no longer have the luxury and the time for ages and ages and lifetimes after lifetimes for this learning. So many of us are learning lifetimes of, of wisdom and knowledge and experiences within just one time, lifetime alone. Those of us who have had extreme experiences in life, difficulties, challenges, we want to bust through this life earth experience so that we can progress and provide service to the earth by understanding these dynamics. The more times that humans are able to understand human dynamics and heal them and not repeat them will change the entire face of the earth. Humanity has programs, intrinsic programs and that are running rampant. Programs of fear that are in the human psyche. The more of us that are able to heal the human psyche, 
we will not have to experience these things on the earth plane. It does not have to be a pain only domain. We can learn from it. And this is where I will introduce that we have two realities occurring right now, two earths that are happening simultaneously. And we know where we are by how we feel. These two energies are happening, but it's not what we think that it is. So it is not about right, wrong, light and dark, good and bad. It's not about that. That only holds us further in the duality. We are not meant to only go to the light because then we are out of balance. When we only veer towards the light and get closest, closest to the light, we cast the greatest shadow. That shadow is also part of us. So we have the light and we have the shadow. We have both. So we have to stop looking at opposites. We have to stop looking at the comparisons. We have to stop the judgments and begin to practice allowance. I make my choices for me while I allow you to make your choices for you. Your choices may not be good for me, but that's okay. Make your choices. That's good for you. That's law of allowance. And even if I don't like your choice, I'll accept it because it's not about me. Law of acceptance. When we can do those two things, then it opens up into what the real battle is. The real battle on this earth plane right now is not about light and dark. It's not about good and evil. That just is the illusion. That is there to keep us in duality and in comparisons. So let all of that go. And I want to introduce now the concept of what the real battle is. These two earths that we're battling for where we arrive, where we land in one or the other, is the realities of where things are in flow. There's a divine energy that holds everything together. There's a divine system in which we are part of. All energies work cooperatively in this beautiful dance of energy where nature flows beautifully with life, where we are in alignment with nature. It is a type of paradise. Mm. The other reality is separation. Us against them. Me against you. That does not exist because I am you. You are me. What I do has an impact. What you do has an impact. When I make my changes in my thoughts and in my mind, I contribute to an energy that is around the world. We do impact one another. And the way that we choose to show up in life matters. If most of us, if all of us were holding ourselves responsible for the things that we think and do and say, knowing that everything that we put out there has a massive ripple effect. Whatever we put out there begins like a droplet on the edge of a pond. That if we are not careful, we could be adding more droplets to a tsunami of pain that will only come back on us. Hmm. Let's stop hurting one another. Do your best, feel your connection. We are not separate. And when we do that, the world will change. So it's not a battle of good and evil, light and dark. It's a battle of separation or unity, oneness or opposites. So I'll have a deeper video about that a much more later. There's a train that's passing. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being here. What we do matters. You matter. Thank you, everybody.